And I'm going to talk about audiobooks because I thought this would be, uh, since we're, a lot of us are just locked in our homes or we're spending a lot, of a lot more time at home, a good way to spend it might be reading books. And some of us just aren't readers, but we would like to listen to them. And so I thought I'd talk about audiobooks. This is a quote that I really like. This audiobooks are for people who hate reading and for those of us who love reading. Thomas Edison created the first spoken word phonograph in 1877. He predicted technology might one day allow books to be listened to with great profit and amusement by the lady or gentleman whose eyes and hands may be otherwise employed. In 1932, the American Foundation for the Blind began creating books on vinyl records for war-blinded soldiers and blind civilians who couldn't read Braille. Up to that time, the only way you could uh, read a book other than uh, by reading was using Braille. Uh, in 1952, Cademan Records became the first company dedicated to selling spoken word records to the public. The evolution of the spoken book mirrors innovations in the music industry. Books on tape replaced vinyl audiobooks. Then streaming superseded compact discs. And now smartphones are replacing everything else. As the audiobook industry flourishes, so are the number of ways in which you can listen to audiobooks with apps for smartphones, iPads, desktops, Kindles from Amazon, Google, and Apple. Everyone's competing for a chunk of the thriving sector. Most audiobooks are available to listen to, again, on your smartphone, tablets, smartwatch, desktop, or laptop. How to listen to audiobooks depends upon mostly which device you have and your access to apps on it. Both Apple and Android devices will allow you to access virtually every audiobook app. When I started to put this uh, presentation together, I was doing it for the uh, Central Florida, so that's Seminole County and Orange County, and libraries are the best source for uh, audiobooks. And then I did a presentation for Sarasota, the Sarasota Technology User Group, and I live in Manatee County, which is next to Sarasota County. So there are a lot, both library systems have extensive audiobooks available. And when I started looking, uh, here's the Bridges, Iowa's e-library. Uh, I did a presentation for Sun City Center uh, here in Florida. They're part of the Hillsborough County Public Library uh, Consortium. Uh, and then I picked out a couple of, uh, just to go looking around, uh, I knew that there'd be some people on here that uh, might be in the Milwaukee County Federated Library System, the Vancouver Public Library where uh, uh, Ron Brown is, the San Clarita Public Library has uh, audiobooks, the Mesa Public Library in Arizona, and the Metropolitan Library System in Oklahoma City. Just a few, but you'll find in your, if you have a library card and you go to your library site, you can check out audiobooks. Most of them are downloadable and or you can stream them. And every website will have some kind of a, a library website will have some kind of an explanation of what they have and how you can get it and how many books you can get or uh, how they do it. And all you'll need to have is a library card. Uh, every library gives them out. You don't pay for it. And you usually get a PIN number. You have to remember that PIN number. So if you already have a library card, you may need to go online, create your account with the PIN number, and then you can start using ebooks or audiobooks. Uh, here in Seminole County, uh, which is outside of Orlando, they have uh, a couple of systems uh, that they subscribe to. One is Overdrive, another one is Hoopla, another one is Tumblebook Library. And, and you'll see as we look at several of these libraries, they use a lot, a lot of them subscribe. There's a lot of them subscribe to the same ones. 
So Overdrive you're going to see more of. Uh, and Overdrive has a Libby app. And you can get that on the iOS. You can get it on Android. Uh, you can get it on Kindle. Uh, you can use it on your PC. And same with Hoopla as, uh, as many others. Now, here are some examples of some books. You'll notice that some of these are ebooks, some are audiobooks. What's an e what's the difference? Audiobook is somebody is reading it to you. An ebook, you're going to have to look at it on your device of choice. Uh, if it's a phone, you're gonna it's gonna be a little more difficult, but if you've got a tablet or a Kindle, you can read it quite well or on your PC screen. Or if you want it to talk to you, then you, of course, have to have some way in which you're going to be able to hear it. In other words, either a headset or speakers. Here's the Orange County Library. You'll see they've got uh, about 1,000 uh, in MP3 audiobooks. And then the OverDrive system, they've got about 958 titles. You'll see in some of these, they, they got a lot more than that. Uh, here's the Manatee. Here's my local library. We've got Hoopla, which has ebooks and audiobooks. We have Overdrive. In other words, you're seeing the same ones. And there's RB Digital Audiobooks, which was formerly One Click Digital. And you're going to see that pop up on some of these as well. Here's Sarasota County. Again, very similar. You got to uh, find it in your library uh, website. Somewhere it'll talk about a digital library. It'll talk about uh, ebooks, or we'll talk about audiobooks. You might have to search for audiobooks, but you'll find them and they're out there. Uh, and most of them have tutorials on how to use them. Here's Cloud Library, Flipster, Hoopla, Wonder, or Overdrive, or Libby. And if you click on the button that says tutorial, it'll show you how to use that particular uh, service. Uh, here's the Greater Phoenix. In Mesa, Arizona, uh, they've got the uh, uh, Overdrive, they've got the RB Digital, they've got something called Cloud Library, and they've got some other ones in which you'll be able to get uh, free MP3s and audio. And most of the audiobooks are MP3s. You'll be able to sign them out, listen to them, sign them back in at no cost. And almost all of the libraries have some way, as I mentioned earlier, about uh, tutorials and, and help. Uh, this particular website says how to borrow titles in OverDrive for Android and Fire tablets, how to do it for a Chromebook, how to do it for iOS, how to do it for Windows 8 or 10 or Windows Mac, uh, Windows 7 or a Mac computer, uh, how many can you borrow, and so on. In other words, they give you a lot of information to help you uh, understand how to use the audiobooks from the library because they want you to sign them out and use them. They're paying a lot of money for these services. They want you to use them. Again, here's some uh, uh, in more detail from the Phoenix Mesa area. And here is from uh, uh, a slide that I used for the Sun City Center in, uh, in Florida, south of uh, Tampa. And they're in Hillsborough County, which is the same county Tampa is in. So if you're in Tampa, if you're in Hills, anywhere in Hillsborough County, you have the use of their service as well. And they have Overdrive, Hoopla, RB Digital, Flipster, some of the ones I've already mentioned, uh, you'll see over and over again in these different library systems. Now, it, in, in, in particular, in the Hillsborough one, they list the audiobooks, and I'm going to bring that up here a little bit more. There's 58,029 downloadable audiobooks. That's a lot of books. And then they also have some on CDs, some are preloaded, and some are audio, audiobook cassettes. Uh, and, of course, right now you can't go into a library and check it out. Most of the libraries are closed. But the downloadable ones you can do uh, right now, you know, as soon as we're done. Please wait. Listen to the end of my uh, presentation and then uh, check in on track three uh, from uh, three to four 
and then uh, and then go find an audio book. Here is the Metropolitan Library System in Oklahoma City. Again, you'll see uh, the ebooks and audio books, and uh, they've got OverDrive. They've got a lot of this uh, again, same services. Uh, this is uh, uh, still the same service, uh, and you'll see Audiobook Cloud and OverDrive. Here is the Vancouver Public Library of Ron still on. Uh, this is the area in which he's in, and they have uh, VPL to go, uh, which is how to access their digital library. Uh, the Toronto Public Library has audiobooks uh, using OverDrive and audiobooks, and the RB G Digital OverDrive. I'm sorry, RB Digital audiobooks. Four Bridges in Iowa, and part of the Iowa system, again, have a lot of audiobooks available, and you can check them out, as well as ebooks. In Wisconsin, the Milwaukee area, if you're a member uh, of a library in Wisconsin, you can get audiobooks and ebooks from the Wisconsin's digital library system. Again, uh, uh, Milwaukee, the County Cat, uh, Overdrive, downloadable media, and a little bit about uh, Miss Libby or Meet Libby, the one tap reading from your library, which is Overdrive. And they give you some information on how to get started, and some help, and so on online. So there's plenty of places to get help with these audiobooks from the libraries. Okay, you don't want to use a library, you like to spend money. Or you want to have some of these books in a library that you keep. Well, of course, Amazon started out as a bookseller. So you're able to get books from Amazon in their prime. They bought a company called Audible, which is uh, a service, a, a subscription service of audiobooks. Audible has a 30-day membership for free, plus one audiobook and two Audible originals to get you started. After your 30-day trial period, you get three titles a month, one audiobook and two Audible originals of your choice. They're easy exchanges. If you don't like a book, you can exchange it, get a different one, and you can cancel at any time. Any of the audiobooks that you have gotten through the subscription, they're yours to keep. And I want you to note that because one of the other services I'm going to compare them to, it doesn't work the same way. So if you go to, uh, to Amazon and go to their Prime Audible site, you will find this information that I'm telling you you'll be able to get uh, some of the titles that they have available as well. And it's $14.99 a month. Now, Audible is strictly audiobooks. Yes, they have over 100,000 audiobooks. Audible is similar to the Netflix originals. They offer some original content. It's exclusive only to them. They are different than Netflix, though, because when you buy something, when, when, when you download a book from them as part of the service, you get to keep them. Netflix doesn't work that way, and neither does the other service I'm going to talk about. Uh, since Audible is owned by Amazon, you can listen to your audiobooks through Alexa, if you wish. And you can also listen to Audible books in a dozen different languages. You can even choose from abridged and unabridged versions. Audible compatible devices. You can, of course, listen on any of the iOS devices, all Android devices, Windows phones. There's a still, still some people have those, believe it or not. The Kindles, uh, either the Kindle Fire, the Oasis 8th and 9th generation, and the Paperwhite and 8th generation. A SanDisk and Creative MP3 players. You may have one of those old MP3 players. A Victor Reader System, Braille Note and a uh, Apex Braille Note. Garmin and TomTom Tom GPS devices will play Audible uh, e uh, audiobooks, and your Mac and Windows computers also. Now, uh, 
Audible during this COVID-19 period have opened up some of their books for free. They basically did it for schools and students, but it's not only student books, but also a lot of the classics. So if you'd like to uh, have a lot of the classics read to you, you skip them when you were in school or you just didn't like them then and you'd like to go back and hear them now, or some of them were your, some of your favorite books, uh, if you go to the website that you see on the left, stories.audible.com slash start dash listen, you can listen for free. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to do anything. Uh, during this COVID period, uh, they are giving this away for free. It's not forever, but it's a good way to learn how to use audiobooks for free and to get used to the technology. Another service other than Audible is called Scribd, S-C-R-I-B-D. Now, that's a little less expensive. That's $9.99 a month. They also have a 30-day trial period. They have unlimited audiobooks, and you can cancel at any time. Scribe offers audiobooks and more. They also have ebooks. They have magazines. They have research papers, and they have sheet music. So Scribe might be something you might want to look into. Don't forget, you can... Look at the, each of these for 30 days. I don't recommend you look at both of them at the same time. Look at one, use the 30 days, try the other one for 30 days, and then decide if you want to subscribe to either one or neither. And with Scribd, with a premium membership from Scribd, you can enjoy thousands of different audiobooks in different genres. You can also access short stories, essays, articles, and documents. Scribd awful also offers original content that you can only listen to with a Scribd membership. So there's some, some audio books on Scribd you can't get on uh, Audible, and there's some on Audible you can't get on Scribd. It's kind of like HBO and, and Netflix. Some, if you subscribe to HBO, there's some things you can't get on Netflix and vice versa. Some of the Scribd compatible devices are iOS 9 or newer. This includes Apple Watches, Android systems that are Android 4.4, which has been around a long time, or higher, and any of the Kindle devices with Fire OS 4 or higher. And it does not include the paper whites. Okay, comparing the two. Uh, I got this from an article, so they talk about some things that they recommend. It's them talking, not me. But the content, Audible and Scribe both offer an extensive library. Uh, Audible is a clear winner here because it offers basically every book for a price. If you're determined to listen to a specific book that just hit the shelves, Audible is probably right for you. If you're looking for more than audiobooks, like magazines, research from papers and so on, then Scribd would be right for you. And as I mentioned, Audible, if you want to keep your library forever, Scribd works more like Netflix. Once you cancel your subscription, you no longer can access the content. As far as compatibility, both services work on most smartphones, which is what most people will use. Uh, price, again, Scribd is a little bit cheaper, but uh, uh, you you know, it depends on what you're looking to do. Now, when I was looking through these, I also found, and there are others as well, but I also found another one that you might want to consider, uh, and it's called Chirp, C-H-I-R-P, and it's called ch at chirpbooks.com. Now, Chirp uh, has popular audiobooks, with, uh, and you buy each one individually. It's not a subscription. There's no subscription fees. There's no subscription. You can go to them anytime, look for the books, and then if you find one, you purchase it. You'll see here that some of the prices, there are $20 and $25 books that are on sale for 5 bucks. There's another one that's a $20 book for $2.99. Uh, another one for $3.99. Another one for $1.99. Now, a couple of them on, on this screen have for $1.99. So, and you'll notice that there's time frames on them, so there, it's not forever. You may go on today and then go back two days later, and there'll be a different list of books that are available. But 
and it's worth taking a look at, finding the book you like for 4 or $5, and then just downloading it. Okay, the next thing I want to do is let you hear what an audiobook sounds like. Uh, and what I didn't want to do was just download a bunch of audiobooks and then take excerpts out of them because I didn't know the copyright infringement problems that I might have, how long that could be. So I went searching for some examples on YouTube, and I found this video, and it's, it's not very long, and it, uh, uh, it's from a coach for readers of eBooks. And it's, it's actually an advertisement for him to uh, get you to be a reader for an eBook, or I'm sorry, an audio book, and have him teach you how to do it properly and correctly for a fee. And so you'll hear at the end an advertisement for him, but he also talks about several audio books and gives examples. Now, don't worry when you watch this, the pictures have nothing to do with what's going on and what he's talking about. Uh, you may see some of the people that he's mentioning in the pictures, but because this is on YouTube, YouTube, you can't just load a, an audio clip to YouTube. It has to have some video. So I think what he did is he just put some pictures in there uh, to help him. So let's take a listen to this, uh, these excerpts from audiobooks. Hi, this is Pat Fraley. As I visit different regions around the country this year, teaching audiobook skills and guiding talent into making audiobook narration book deals and making demos, I thought it might be of value for you to listen to some examples of wonderful narrators and get a sense of how their personal styles vary. It should be an encouragement to you to hear the varied styles which are needed for audiobook narration. So here goes. Here's the superstar of audiobook narrators, Scott Brick, reading an excerpt from What Makes Sammy Run by Bud Schulberg. There's nothing particularly unusual about Scott's voice. It's all about connecting with the listener and his storytelling abilities at unwinding that story. Also, Scott has the ability to give you the style of the piece. Notice how he takes on the feel of a 1930s or 1940s movie that's perfect for the book. The first time I saw him, he couldn't have been much more than 16 years old. A little ferret of a kid, sharp and quick. Sammy Glick. He used to run copy for me. Always ran. Always looked thirsty. Good morning, Mr. Mannheim, he said to me the first time we met. I'm the new office boy, but I ain't going to be an office boy long. Don't say ain't, I said, or you'll be an office boy forever. Thanks, Mr. Mannheim, he said. That's why I took this job, so I can be around writers and learn all about grammar and how to act right. Nine out of ten times I wouldn't have even looked up, but there was something about the kid's voice that got me. He must have been charged with a couple of thousand volts. So, you're a pretty smart little feller, I said. Well, I keep my ears and eyes open, he said. You don't do a bad job with your mouth, either, I said. I wondered if newspaper men always wisecrack the way they do in the movies, he said. Get the hell out of here, I answered. He raced out, too quickly, a little ferret. Smart kid, I thought. Smart little yid. He made me uneasy. That sharp, neat, eager little face. I watched the thin, wiry body dart around the corner in high gear. It made me uncomfortable. I guess I've always been afraid of people who can be agile without grace. Now listen to Renee Rodman as she perfectly balances reading with embodying the characters with a reality in this excerpt from the young adult book, Wesley, The Story of a Remarkable Owl by Stacey O'Brien. I was a little nervous about asking if I could bring an owl home to live with us, but she just smiled and patted her horse on the neck. A barn owl? Won't he be a great addition to the family? Wendy, I said, I'll have to keep dead mice in the freezer and cut up mice in the fridge. Would that be okay? Meat is meat, she shrugged. I mean, a lot of mice, Wendy. A lot of mice? How many is a lot? Well, probably thousands of mice as time goes by. How long do barn owls live anyway? 
she asked. Mm, I'm not sure how long they live in captivity. Maybe up to 15 or 20 years. Well, I think you should do it, she said. It's the chance of a lifetime. Here's an excerpt by Carrington McDuffie from Abiding Darkness by John Aubrey Anderson, where we hear her wonderful skill at doing some strong character work. Boy, he never called Mose anything else. There ain't never gonna be no drink better than coffee. Except in heaven, I reckon. The frail old man nodded and spoke as he bent to put the cup by the rocking chair. Except in heaven. Is right, boy. Gonna drink from the fountain that don't never run dry. A show enough pure river of living water. Clear as crystal, proceeding straight out of the throne. Now that's a drink to shame the best cup of coffee on the place. Now, here's a sample from Kata Mazer, narrating from the Nanny Dyers. Kata is a stellar reader, but by her own admission, has a kind of vanilla voice. One of her greatest skills, and one that is sought after by producers and publishers, is her ability to connect to the listener by giving the impression she's reading to one person. If there were any justice in the world, this is the point when all nannies should be given roadblocks and a stun gun. These rooms are destined to become the burden of my existence. From this point on, 95% of this apartment will be nothing more than a blurred background for chasing, enticing, and point-blank pleading with the child to put the Delft milkmaid down. I am also about to become intimate with more types of cleaning fluid than I knew there were types of dirt. It will be in her pantry, stocked high above the washer-dryer, that I discover people actually import toilet bowl cleanser from Europe. We arrive in the kitchen. It is enormous. With a few partitions, it could easily house a family of four. She stops to rest one manicured hand on the counter, affecting a familiar pose, like a captain at the helm about to address the crew. However, I know if I asked her where she keeps the flour, a half hour of rummaging through unused baking utensils would ensue. Here's my friend and wonderful actor, Richard McGonigal, who is fully capable of doing character voice work, but in this excerpt from Roosevelt and Churchill, Men of Secrets by David Stafford, Richard keeps to a rather dry read, almost reporting, which I think is perfect for the book. Franklin Roosevelt learned of Hitler's attack on Western Europe late on the evening of 9 May 1940 in a telephone call from his ambassador in Belgium. Ensconced in his favorite red leather armchair in the second floor study of the White House, surrounded by his collection of maritime pictures and models of ships, he listened grimly to the news of simultaneous attacks by more than a hundred German divisions on Belgium, Holland, Luxembourg, and France. Ninety minutes later, the first reports began to filter in of bombs falling on Brussels, Amsterdam, and Rotterdam, and he stayed up until the early hours to digest them. Here's Hilary Huber reading from Going to Bend. She has that skill of giving the listener the impression she's reading right to them. Also, Hilary is wonderful at making bold character choices. While Petey diced 50 carrots, Rose read aloud from the weekly newspaper about old Billy Wall, who had just been indicted on sodomy charges. You know what I think? I think if he did what those kids say he did, the guy deserved to have a bad thing happen to him. I mean worse than shame in a jail term. I mean something bad. They should take him just like you'd take a carrot and peel him down real slow. You know, real careful. Layer by layer until you've got him peeled naked as an egg. And then you bring him to Hubbard Elementary and you lock him in the gym with 20 mothers with baseball bats. You put some Gatorade in there and some high nutrition snacks and maybe have an alternate or two who can substitute when one of the women gets tired. She traded Rose the peeler for a paring knife. The son of a bitch. Now here's an excerpt from Better Than I Know Myself by Virginia DuBarry and Donna Grant. It's read by one of our favorite readers, Lisa Renee Pitts. We hire her for all the books we have produced written by African-American authors. Listen to how Lisa Renee reads as if she becomes each character, including the author's narrator. I wish they all go to hell. Carmen felt the throbbing bass of her brother's stereo vibrate the steel fire door as she shoved her key in the last of four locks. How you gonna throw that car down? 
She knew Z and some of the fools he hung with were in there, playing pinochle or dirty hearts, eating greasy egg rolls and pork fried rice. Now here's Raven Kane reading from Jewel Plum Sykes' book, Bergdorf Blondes. Raven's voice and performance are just right for the material. The Upper East Side wife I met is called Muffy. Apparently it was once a very popular name in Connecticut, where most Muffies were born, roughly in the middle of the last century. This Muffy, like all her neighborhood Muffies, says, Ralph Lauren is my drug of choice. She's also addicted to Botox injections. What book would benefit from your narration skills and style reading? What is your personal style? I'll be near you to help. If you'd like to join these gainfully employed audiobook narrators, a schedule of when I'll be in your neck of the woods can be found at my website, patfraley.com. Hi, this is Pat Fraley. Well, that's what it, they sound like. Uh, in my younger days, I was a, a radio student, and I would have loved to have done some books. My voice was a lot stronger then, and uh, I would have enjoyed it. However, uh, uh, I don't think I am, but I am going to listen to some audiobooks, and I hope you will as well. Dave, are there any questions? Yeah, got a couple here. Um, is it a LibriVox? I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. It has not been mentioned. Uh, is it is not as good as a paid service? I am not. What is the name of it? L i b r i v o x. I am not familiar with that one. There's probably a lot of those uh, audiobook services out there. Uh, I would just check them out, uh, look to see uh, some reviews on the service, look to see what they charge and how easy it is to uh, uh, stop a subscription if it's a subscription based. I would just be very careful, especially if you're not totally sure about them, do some research before you sign up for them. Okay. Um, okay, if a particular author which service does a good job of recommending similar authors? They all do, and especially the libraries. If you go to the library, you can search by author as well as the titles and the genres. So you should be able to search for the titles to find out which ones are available, which ones a particular author has, somebody has produced as an audio book and then look to see if they have it available. What you may find is, say, Audible may have certain authors and have a lot of their books that the other services don't have, or Scribd might have some from a particular author that uh, Audible doesn't have. Okay, I'm going to piggyback off this and about recommending uh, the readers. Your phone <laughs> is the best one because you already no, have one. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Pavi. Okay, how you know if you got a particular author? How about if you like a particular reader or, or narrator? Oh, or the, the narrator? I, that I don't know. I don't know if there is a list of who is the narrators of the various books. Uh, probably, if you know who the narrator is that you like. If you'll do a search, I am, sh and then audiobooks, I'm sure there'll be a list somewhere that would give them uh, a list of all of the books that they have narrated and uh, that are available. Yeah. So, any other questions? It's a good way to read books on your own time while you're driving uh, uh, in these days where you're not going to be going anywhere special. Uh, if you just want to get out and see what the world is like, uh, or if you're a walker and you take your phone with you, get a headset or some ear uh, some earplugs and put them in and just walk and listen to the book while you're doing your walking. Good, great way to get exercise uh, and, and do your reading at the same time. The thing about Audible uh, that I read about quite a while ago 
is when after Amazon bought them and they updated their software, it's now possible if you're listening to an audio, audio book on, from Audible on one device, let's say your phone, and then you go home and you start and you want to use it on your tablet, it knows where you left off and you can pick up. And Audible, is, it's part of their software and their service. Yeah, and it also works on, because uh, you put a Kindle, you can read the book, listen to the book, and go back to reading it again. Yep. Okay, another one said, we talking about what service, uh, does any of the services off a podcast? You know what you talk about, which one does the books. Yeah, I'm not sure if those services do. I use something called, uh, oh, and I'm, it's got a, I forgot which podcast program I use, but I, I listen to a lot of podcasts at night. And I have a little earpiece that I put on. It's a Bluetooth earpiece. I put it over my ear and uh, start the podcasts. And I have several of them listed every day. And I just go to sleep and I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like three podcasts down. But uh, So I've missed some of them. But there's a lot of ways you can listen to podcasts. I also listen to podcasts through my uh, Amazon Echo. And I probably just set mine off. Yep. <laughs> uh, but I listen to a lot of podcasts and, and actually radio stations. I listen to old radio programs through those devices as well. And old radio is is kind of like reading audio or listening to audio books because everything was in your imagination. You have to visualize what they're talking about. You don't see it like on television and movies that kind of take away the, the possibility of you saying what you see might be different than what somebody else sees. And it's really neat and listening to old mysteries and Westerns and so on from old radio programs as well as listening to audiobooks, uh, really get your imagination working and keeps your mind going. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Well, I hope everybody uh, learned something. I hope uh, you go out, check your libraries for the audiobooks, see what's out there, look to see what some of the more popular ones are, see what ones are available. And just get one and try it. Before you commit to subscribing to one of the services, make sure you you like the media and the medium. And if you do, then start looking at some of the services and try them for, get your 30 days worth before you start paying for it. 